graphing, well, realize you already graphed in the activity. You also graphed on the fair game review. So hopefully a review here. So to graph an inequality, a graph is exactly what a graph has always been. It shows all solutions. So it shows every single number that if we were to plug it in would result in a true statement. We use an open dot for less than and greater than, no or equal to. We're not allowed to use that particular value as a solution. So we use an open dot to signify we can get really, really close to that number, but never actually use it as a solution. A closed dot will signify that we are allowed to use that number as one of our values that has the or equal to. We do shade to show that all the values to that side, either left or right, are solutions. So we have x is greater than 4, no or equal to, open dot, greater than, numbers bigger than 4, shading to the right. Greater than or equal to less than 1, or equal to, I now have a solid dot, numbers greater than, again, go to the right. X is less than negative 2, no equal, no or equal to, so open dot, numbers less than negative 2, less than, go to the left. X is less than or equal to 3, have the or equal to, so I see my closed dot, less than, again, my shading goes to the left. Now, one thing I will warn you about, everyone always says, well, I remember that I always shade in the direction that the inequality symbol is pointing. So both of these are pointing to the right, so I shaded to the right. Both of these are shaded or pointing to the left, so I shaded to the left. You have to be careful of that. That only happens when the variable is on the left-hand side. What if I said 4 is greater than x? Well, this also, I can put that on my graph. It still has an open dot. And you say, oh, I'll still shade to the right side. That's the way my arrow is facing. Read it the other way. X is less than 4. 4 is greater than X. Therefore, 4 is the biggest value X can be. This one would have the shading in the opposite direction. Again, if I rearrange and put the variable on the left, my point's pointing at the x, mouth opening towards the 4. So again, the variable has to be on the left-hand side. If you always read the variable first, greater, shade to the right, r and greater, r for right, less than, l, left. Have to start with your variable first. So to graph our examples, x is less than 9, so I'll put 0. I'm going to count by 3, so I don't have to count the whole way up to 9 by 1s, which is perfectly fine. Just make sure you label so I know what you're counting by. No or equal to means an open dot. Less than, numbers to the left are less than R9. x is greater than or equal to 2.5. So I'll go by 1's, which means halfway in between would be my 2.5. I do have an or equal to, which means I do have a closed dot greater than shading to the right. Watch the next one. It's flip-flopped of what we would normally have. Negative 1 half is greater than x. Rewrite it so your variable's on the left. That's where we like it anyway. The point's pointing at our x. So x is less than negative one half. So I'll say negative one half, halfway between zero and negative one. No or equal to, so open dot, x is less than negative one half. So my shading will come to then the left. And our last one, what the heck's going on in there? That is a square root sign. Well, what does a square root sign mean to do? What number times itself equals 25? Another way, what number squared is 25? It is 5. 
5 times 5 is 25. So just a little simplification we needed to do there first. Or equal to solid dot less than numbers less than or equal to 5 come to the left hand side. Watch for some simplification that you may need to do. Be careful you're not always shading the direction that your arrow faces. Pay attention. If the variable is on the left, that's true. Rearrange it so then the variable is on the left-hand side. Of course, going to finish off with some word problems then. First one, the world record for the largest Pacific blue marlin is 1,376 pounds. M representing the weight of that blue marlin we want an inequality. So we're comparing M to this 1,376. This is the largest ever caught. So it does actually equal that. So we would have an or equal to. Well, that's the biggest value that's ever been caught. So every other weight would have to be less than or equal to that given value. If it's the smallest, everything else would be bigger. This one's the biggest, so all other weights would have to be smaller than that. For number two, after two games of bowling, Joe has a total score of 475. To win, he needs a total score of 800, or excuse me, 684 or higher. Let X represent the score he needs for his third game to win the tournament. So we want an inequality for x. Well, how are we going to use x, which is going to represent the score he needs in his third game? We have, right now, a total score of 475. He needs a score of 684 or higher. Well, what does that mean we have to do? Right now, he's at 475. Between where we're at and what he's going to need in his third game, he would need to add those two scores together to get to that score of 684. We need to be at 684 or higher. That's the least amount. So that means when we take where he's at now, the 475, and add his third game, that total needs to be greater than or equal to 864. In our next section, we'll look at what we actually would do to find the values of x. For now, though, we're just writing that inequality or possibly even graphing as well.